things we can do for the Lord. Recognize his presence. Come on, somebody. Because, see, God is he's man. And he created man to be respected. I don't want to go too deep into that now, but he created man to be respected. He created women to be loved. Am I right? Am I in the book or no? Okay, so men feel the level of respect when they're acknowledged when they come in the room. Men feel disrespected when they're not acknowledged when they come in the room. And so as the Spirit of God has entered into this room, by acknowledging him, we're showing him reverence and respect, and out of that, he is well pleased. But if he enters the room and we don't perceive it, if he enters the room and we don't acknowledge it, as a man, he feels disrespect. But I, 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 won't, I won't turn this into another sermon. I, that's, I'm going to say that for next week. If y'all want to hear more about that, just come on back. <laughs> Glory to God. I want us to go into the book of Romans this morning. Hallelujah. Or afternoon, whatever time of day it is. Today, let's go into the book of Romans. Hallelujah. Let's do that. We're going to read a couple of scriptures, and I want to share with you what God has put on my heart for us to, to work with, to chew on, to eat on. And I know this is a familiar text, but we're going to go through it anyway, amen? So Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Somebody say living sacrifice. Living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. It's reasonable to present yourself Holy to God is reasonable. It's the least we could do. Yes. <laughs> it's the least we could do. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The good and acceptable, the perfect will of God is not that you do all these beautiful works. It's not, you see, because he'll, he'll empower you to do that. Yeah. He gives you the power for that. So, he, you know what I'm saying? The good and perfect will of God, as I'm reading it here, is that you be transformed That's right. That's right. by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. So when I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind, everything else follows. I don't know if y'all getting this or not. Yes. Yes. So, so he's trying to simplify how to give God honor, how to give God glory, and how to walk in the perfect will of God. Let the word of God and your relationship with the Lord transform you so that you can be renewed. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all going to get this today. This is a good one. I might have to take this for myself. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I, I want to talk to you from a text that change is inevitable, but transformation is optional. Change is inevitable, but transformation is optional. I looked at this word transform, and obviously when you want deeper understanding of something, you got to go and get translations, so that way you make sure you're in the book, right? And so the Greek translation is metamorpho. Metamorpho, which means to change your moral character for the better. So it means to change your moral character for the better. So change is inevitable, but transformation is optional. And we're constantly changing in one form or another, whether it be physically, you know, you gain weight, you lose weight, you know, so there's losses there. I gain my weight like right here. I don't know about y'all, but all my weight, it, it sits right here. And, and, and emotionally, we change often through hurts and disappointments and letdowns and all these different things. So we end up changing how we think. We change how we behave and, and how we perceive things because of hurts and all those different things. So change is happening all the time. It may lead you from being an outgoing person and turn me to being a sheltered person. Not Everybody was not born one way. We change according to how things happen throughout the span of our lives. And sometimes failure may cause us to doubt or discredit our value. 
Spiritually, people are changing all the time. Either you're growing towards or away from God. Come on, somebody. Can I just be real for a minute? If you're idle, stuck in the middle, you're still moving further away from God. Because he's constantly growing. He's constantly moving. He's constantly doing something. And, and his relationship goal is for you to get closer to him. So if I'm sitting still, I'm idle. And if I'm idle, I'm in rebellion. Change is inevitable. But transformation is optional. So see, change happens naturally through our daily interactions within this world. You watch the news enough, you, what you see will affect what you do. It'll affect where you go. It'll affect who you like and who you dislike. Y'all know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The world will cause you to change daily based on emotions and all these other things. But transformation is a little different. Transformation requires a peeling off of old layers, <coughs> old thought processes, old actions, old ways of thinking. Transformation is a process. It requires an intentional renewal of your own policies and standards and beliefs of what you've been exposed to. And so I want to address the separation between growing in Christianity as a religion versus growing in spirituality as a disciple for Christ. And so for years and years we've had many folks growing in Christianity as a religion. In other words, they're changing. But only a remnant is growing spiritually as a disciple of Christ. In other words, a remnant is being transformed. So Y'all stay with me. Every individual in this room, including myself, is responsible for our own transformation. Your pastor can't do it. Your spouse can't do it. Your children can't do it. Your parents can't do it. You, as an individual, are responsible for your own transformation. See, because there's going to come a day when we stand before the Lord, and he's going to ask you, well, what did you do with the talents I gave you? You can't say, well, my mama didn't let me, or, <laughs> or my daddy didn't let me, or, or well, such and such hurt me, and because they hurt me, I never healed from that, and therefore I just chose to take another route in life instead of the one you gave me. See, he doesn't want to hear all of that because he placed you here to perform a specific duty. And if you don't perform the duty, how many of y'all know if you are given a job at work and you don't perform at that job, what do they do? Okay, then you're out of there, right? So as we report to God, we want to make sure that we have done what God has called us to do so that way he can say, well done, my goodness Amen. and faithful servant. Amen. And so even in jobs, policies change sometimes. And as policies change, it's up to us to adapt to the change. I, I just want two or three people to agree with me on that. Yes, sir. <laughs> See, sometimes they put away the old policies. Dude, we're not doing it. I know we've been doing it this way for 20 years, but we're doing a new thing. We're, we're getting rid of that policy. We're going to install something new, something different. And so sometimes people will change for compliance. But deep down inside, their heart is still with the old. So, and, and usually the old, it, it stays with them to a point where it doesn't really resurface until there's trouble in the waters. Come on, That's right. My, my, my. So, so when there's trouble in the waters, what ends up happening is what was truly in their heart comes out, and they start speaking on what they thought was hidden, and everybody thought they gotten rid of, but the reality, it was with them this whole time. So the actions and what they were doing was simply for compliance. It had nothing to do with transformation. Yeah. You ever been a part of a conversation with somebody and you know you, you both have been part of some sort of a change and, and the part of that, that process you, you notice they're not giving hundred percent to what's new. They kind of give 75, they give just enough. We talk about just enough earlier, they give just enough. Just enough. But then when things happen and problems arise, the first thing they do, well, when it was the other way, we ain't had these problems. <laughs> right? I, I know I've been in many of those times. I've been that person. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't like the change. The change, it, it, it went against my norm. It went against what I was comfortable with. It went against everything that I thought was right. And so this whole thing about change, it disturbed me to a point where I'll comply with the change. But deep down inside, I'm still with the old. Mm -hmm. 
So I want to say something to us about gauging our relationship. Because, you know, a lot of times we have, you know, you can ask anybody. I think in this day and age, everybody believes they're a Christian. Um, <laughs> and I'm not trying to make fun, but I'm just, I'm just, the reality is you can ask anybody, are you a Christian? They'll say, yes, I'm a Christian. Well, what is it about you that makes you a Christian? What do you believe? And they start talking about all these other things that's not even biblical, but they hold firm to that. And they say, but this is part of being a Christian. I'm free. Okay. You're not free to pagan worship and call yourself a Christian. That's another topic. I'm trying to stay here. I'm trying to stay with y'all. But, but, but the reality is, is that people have changed to fit cultural norms, but they have not been transformed to fit what the Word of God says. Yeah. 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 So we have to not gauge our relationship with the Lord based on the worldly things. Because, see, anybody can attend church service. Am I right? Because yeah, right. the doors of the church are open, so anybody can come in and sit down. Like anybody that. has the opportunity to pay their tithes. Anybody has the opportunity to sing a song if they know the words. Anybody has the opportunity to do these things. But it does not necessarily mean that you're being transformed. Like it does not equate to having a strong relationship with the Lord. That's right. That's right. This is true. Have you been transformed by the renewing of your mind? See, see, light is what drives out darkness. Good is what shuns evil. Holiness is what strips away unholiness. So the question again is, have you been transformed or are you simply in compliance? Do you still think and act and do the same things today that you were doing 20 years ago? Not just talking about the stuff that people can see, but I'm talking about the stuff that people can't see. See, because I, I feel like if I hide this well enough, they won't know that this is one of my issues. And that way, as long as nobody catches me, I can continue to do this and then show up to church. Praise the Lord, saints. God is good. And all the time. See, 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 we know how to do the church thing, right? But deep down in our secret places, Yes. Have we been transformed? Yes. That's right. Oh, yes. oh my God. Yes, Heavenly Father. Oh my God. So, so just a side note, I want to kill the notion that you have to change for me just because I'm your pastor. I want, I want to destroy that. Some pastors will, will teach and indoctrinate you to believe that you got to act a certain way in front of them. But the reality is your accountability goes to God first. That's right. That's Amen. Right. I'm just a messenger that he sent to relay his word. That's what I am. Amen. But but your transformation, don't do it for me because it won't last. Amen. It won't last. Do it for him, growing your relationship with him, therefore your accountability to him will grow. Amen. Thank you, everybody. So one of the things that we have to understand is your transformation comes first for the glory of God. Then secondly, to become a witness of Jesus Christ for the work of the kingdom here on earth. And there is a distinction between being changed and being transformed. So I'm going to give you an example. Pharaoh and Exodus experienced the direct judgment of God. God turned the water into blood. I don't know if y'all remember this. It starts back in chapter 7 of Exodus. God turned water into blood and Pharaoh was not moved by it. And God sent these frogs. And then Pharaoh said, pray to the Lord that he may take away these frogs from me and my people. And then Moses did it, and Pharaoh's heart became hardened again. And then the Lord sent lice, and Pharaoh was not moved. And then God sent flies, and Pharaoh said, pray to the Lord, intercede for me. And then God sent disease amongst the livestock. Pharaoh again was not moved. But then the Lord sent boils, and he was not moved again. And then the Lord sent hail, and now Pharaoh is confessing that he has sinned against the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> That, 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 there's no relationship there. Therefore, he's up. When troubles get hard, oh, 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 I've sinned. I've sinned. I need you to pray for me. But then when everything is cool, it's, I go back to my old ways. But then when you send another trial to me, oh, oh, I need, I need, I need prayer. I need prayer. Come on, somebody. I've been there. I've yeah, been, come yeah, on, come yeah. on. And then when, when, when he answers the prayer, I go back to my old ways. But see, the Bible says a double-minded minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So Pharaoh was changed by the plague sent from the Lord, but he was never transformed. 
So how many of us can attest that at some point in our lives we were reaping the punishments of our decisions? Some of the things our egos got in the way. And I learned this last week from a guy named Logan. Ego meaning edging God out. <laughs> My God, that's good. That's sticking with me right there. So our egos get in the way. We edge God out. And then we say, Lord, I messed up. Fix this for me. And you, if you fix me and get me out of this situation, I'll change and do other things. You say I'll be transformed. We usually say I'll change, yeah. right? So we already speaking that we might go back. Uh, I'll change. I'll change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saying that you'll change for this, but you won't be transformed. My God, my God. So there's a distinct difference between being changed and being transformed. See, see, Pharaoh changed but was never transformed because he had no relationship. He had no connection. He worshiped a totally different God. Now, let's look at Saul. On the other hand, see, Saul was a persecutor of Christians. He had the same type of encounter with the Lord that Pharaoh did. But in this case, Saul's character was affected. Saul took heed to the warning and instruction, and by doing so, he was transformed. So much so that they had to change his name to separate the old him from the new him. He had to get a totally new identity because who he used to be was totally opposite of who he became. Jesus. He went from tearing down the church to building up the church. He went from taking away life to leading people to life. Transformation is a course redirection that does not blur the line from the old to the new. There's a clear and distinct difference when you've been transformed. Hmm. See, it's not about being the perfect performance. It's not about um, being able to put on the facade. It's about a renewed mind. A made-up mind, a mind that is dedicated to the Lord, but it still needs cleansing every day. Oh yeah, right. come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. See, once you substantiate it in Christ, you still got to realize that I still need to maintain this daily. Oh, yeah. Amen. And so, Peter, another one. I love this example. Peter was transformed. See, at one point he was a loose cannon. Peter will cuss you out. He'll chop your ear off in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but see, Peter needed transformation in order to become who he became. See, because there was a point in time when Peter, amongst others, tried to cast demons out and he couldn't do it. Jesus, how I tried to do it, it didn't work. So he had to learn to walk with Christ a little bit more. He had to learn to pay attention to a little bit more detail than what the Word of God truly is, which is through Christ. He had to really get closer and closer and closer to Christ. And then what ended up happening? You think about Acts 5. The transformation happened and people believed that if I could just get in the shadow of Peter, I can be healed. See, there's a distinction between being changed and being transformed. See, there was a transformation that took place in him, see, because he realized how to minister the gospel, how to walk according to what Christ did. But he had to do it through his relationship with him. So as he learned these things, he was able to walk in more power. So much so, when people saw him, they just wanted to get in the shadow of him. See, there was a time when Jesus walked with someone, this woman said, I just need to touch the hem of his garment. So what I'm seeing here is if I transform my mindset, I can walk the way Jesus walked. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. That's okay. See, because when Jesus walked, people had enough faith to believe if I touched his cloak, I could be healed. When Peter was transformed and became more like Christ, people believed if I just got close enough to Peter and got in his shadow, I can be healed. And so what I'm here to tell somebody today, that if you walk according to God's statutes, if you get a relationship with Jesus Christ and allow it to transform you, People will see you and say, oh, my God, if I can just get close enough to that anointed man or woman of God, I know this healing will take place. Because God's favor is truly on this person. His anointing is showing mightily in this person's life. And I know I don't, I don't, I don't have time, and they don't have time to sit with me. I, I'm not worried about if they have a scheduled appointment with, with me, brother. I, I don't have time, and they don't have time. But if I can just get close enough to them, 
because they're close enough to Christ, I can be healed. See, these are the things that he released in us to walk in. See, your transformation will be confirmed by power. I'm going to say that again. Your transformation will be confirmed by power. So if you want to know if you've been transformed, one thing you can do is operate in the power of Jesus Christ. If I pray and God hears my prayer and he answers and he moves, if I lay a hand and you're healed, come on somebody. Yeah. See, because the Bible says that for those who believe, signs, miracles, and wonders will follow. If I, if I move according to what God is saying, if, but I can't just do it with actions. It starts here. See, I have to be transformed because how many of y'all know that we can do a whole lot of things and be thinking about something else? We have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And that Peter, it didn't stop with that. Because if you go a little further in chapter 9, see, he came across this man who was paralyzed for eight years. He spoke to that man, said, in the name of Jesus, you're healed. This man got up and was healed. This is the same Peter that beforehand couldn't cast a single demon out. This is the same Peter that used to cuss folk out. Come on, somebody. See, because people can't see you the way you are now because all they can see is how you used to be. Come on, it's a hard time for people to see you as the anointed person you are today because all they can think about is how you used to act, right? Yeah. And so, so here it is. We got Peter who has a reputation of chopping folks' ears off. Come on, he's a, he cussed folk out. He's got the reputation, but had he not been transformed mentally, then the reputation would have still stood. But now people got to respect who he has become because the power has followed the transformation. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. So he healed this man. And people were like, oh, Peter's in town. we got to go get Peter because this woman over here, this woman named Tabitha, she's dead. She died. Maybe he can do something with her. So they call him over to the house, and Tabitha's laying there dead. And he says to her, get up. Your power will confirm your transformation. Because when he told her to get up, she went from dead to up embracing him and hugging him and saying, oh, my friend Peter. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wow. wow. Jesus. Change is inevitable, but transformation is optional. God has given us all the same opportunity to walk according to the way he did, the way Jesus did. Pharaoh didn't take advantage of it. Apostle Paul took advantage of it. Peter took advantage of it. Those that take advantage of it, there's a shift that happens. See, because when he says, I'm taking you from the old thing and I'm doing a new thing, what he does, he has a tendency of erasing and forgetting who you used to be so that he can focus on who he called you to be and he can help you walk in that anointing. So today is your day to make the decision. Lord, I don't want to just do activities that look like you. I want to be transformed by the renewing of my mind so I can walk in the power that you have given me. I want the power. Anybody want the power today? I want the power. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I don't know who this message is for, but God is saying I've given you access to heal the sick to raise the dead and further the kingdom, but you have to do two things for me. The first thing, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Power will be added unto you. Favor will be added unto you. Anointing will be added unto you. My glory will be added unto you. And when I've added all of these things to you, you have to develop a mental capacity to grasp what I've given you. And in order to develop a mental capacity to grasp all of this that I have given you, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your what? Your mind. 
So what God has given us is a gift that comes without repentance. But if you don't want to operate in it, just stay the same. Right? There's no pressure. Stay the same. And all of this power will remain dormant in you. But if you want to be operating in the power, in the anointing, under the favor of God, it starts right here in the mind. Hallelujah. He said, be transformed. He's speaking into your life that if you allow your mind to be renewed, change will happen, transformation will take place, and you will Hallelujah. never be the same. Thank you, Lord. So if you want to go higher, come on, tell somebody, I'm going higher. I'm going, I'm going higher. higher. I'm going higher. Hallelujah. Going higher. Glory to God. So I got one last scripture, and then we're going to close. It's a short word, but it was God said, just give yes. me this and, and shut it down. Psalms 51. Hey. Yeah. Oh, come on, yeah. somebody. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Chapter 51, verse 10 through 12. It says, create in me a pure heart, O oh God. Yes. Hallelujah. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Yes. yes. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from, from me. me. Hallelujah. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Hallelujah. Thank oh, you, Lord. Lord keep Thank me. you, Lord. Yes. Lord, keep me. Hallelujah. I need a new heart. Yes. I need a right spirit. Lord, I, I need you to let me keep the Holy Spirit you gave to me. Because sometimes if you give somebody something, they don't use it. You want it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to leave that alone. But sometimes we get to that place where we recognize, Lord, I've been doing all the right stuff. I've been saying all the right stuff, but my heart had not changed. Yeah. I'm still, in, I'm still battling with some of these internal issues and I feel like I've gotten over for so long because nobody called me out on it. I know such and such is a prophet, but he never said anything to me. And pastor usually be on point with his word and it ain't speaking to me. But I know for myself, I'm not in the right place. Created me a pure heart and renew a right spirit. In me. See, I need both of those things to happen. See, I, not only my heart, I need, a, I need the right spirit, too, because there's a lot of spirits floating around out there. There's a lot of spirits that's looking for a host. Come on, somebody. So you can get a new heart, but if you don't have the right spirit in you, that's, those other spirits are going to come in, and they're going to taint that heart. So you got to have a, a, a complete package here. I need both of them. I need it all. I need it all. So I want to ask you today, Not have you been transformed, but are you willing to be transformed right now? Thank you. Glory to God. Everybody stand to your feet. Hallelujah. nothing more than for you to be transformed here. See, because as a man thinketh in his heart, see, there's a connection here. So is he. There's a connection between these two areas. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if we are transformed by the renewing of our mind, our thought process will tend to shift towards the things of God. And if our thought processes shift towards the things of God, then our hearts will shift towards the things of God. And I know for a fact that whatever is in our hearts tend to come out. Yes. Woo! So I, I'm going to declare today Thank you. a renewing of everyone's mind in you. Yes. I'm setting that in place right now with the power and authority that he has given me. Thank you. That everyone in here has a renewed mind yes. in the name of Jesus. And that the old things have passed away. And that all things have become new. The old habits will no longer... The old habits will no longer be appealing to you. They're going to make you sick. 
the, the old things is going to drive you crazy. The old things is going to make you be like, what in the world am I doing? The old things will be so, you won't be able to tolerate it because you've become a new creature. And I'm declaring that all things become new. The things that God has placed in you has to come out. The things of God will be the very things that you cling to. The things of God will be the very things that, if you will, turn you on. Come on, somebody. Yeah, the right. things of God will be the very things that get you out of bed in the morning. The things yes. of God will be the very things that drives you every single day. The things of yes. God. Come on, somebody. Yes. The yes. things yes. of God is going to cause the things not of God to flee from you. Yes. Amen. I'm declaring it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. If there is anything that is ungodly, that is in your circle, that is in your sphere of influence, that has tried to come against you and pull you away from the things of God, I declare today those things are gone. Amen. In Jesus' name, people, things, idols, whatever those things are, God, I declare today that you make it so clear. To everyone here today that whatever is not of you that looks good, there's a lot of things that look good but is not God. Lord, expose the good looking things that is not of you and remove them. He's given you authority to speak it. Everyone in here has the authority to speak it. He says life and death is in the power of the tongue. The tongue has power. When you speak God honors it. So don't speak death over your life. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you like it is. Don't speak anything negative or anything evil over your life. If you're having a bad taste, say, they say, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Say, I'm, I'm being tested, but I'm going to pass. Hallelujah. There's no such thing as a bad day unless you speak it. Yes. <laughs> you are all blessed. You. According to the word of God, you are all blessed. Your minds are healed. And your lives are now free. So I'm declaring today, and I want you all to walk in that freedom. Yes. That when the enemy, as you walk out those doors, they, right now you're free, but as you walk out of those doors, they test them. I wouldn't be right if I didn't give you the heads up, all right? Heads up. Amen. Heads up. You're going to be tested when you get out those doors. You better speak into the atmosphere. I'm free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Unholy thoughts get away from me. You can't dwell where I've already, I've already made provision for God's power to reside in me. The Holy Spirit is in me. Therefore, evil thoughts cannot. We got to speak those things out there and not be afraid to talk out loud. Listen, so let folk think you're crazy because you're speaking out. But it's going to do you some good to do it. And later on, you'll be a witness for them. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for being with us today. I thank you for this word that you gave me on today. And I pray, Lord, that it has fallen on good ground and that we will continue to water this seed, Lord God, so that it will continue to spring up and bring everlasting life. And that we will be able to walk in the power and the anointing that you have already given us. Lord, help us with this battle of the mind. Lord, I've already declared that we are free, but help us to not go backwards or keep us focused on you. Help us to stay focused on your promises and your, uh, your power, your anointing, and the purpose that you have given us for our time here on earth. Lord, we love you. We give you everything from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, even the deep hidden areas of our lives. We turn those things over to you and Lord, we praise you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, all saints said amen. 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 Give God some praise, y'all.